Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery and today we are unboxing yet more things. I, I already filmed some other unboxing videos earlier and man, this used to be a lot. Um, yeah, I've been traveling recently and a whole bunch of stuff that I either ordered or pre-ordered a long time ago all came in at the same time while I was gone. So I just have a pile of stuff to get through. Um, I've already unboxed two knives from Urban EDC Supply, uh, the TW Price Dawn, um, there's some stuff Oaks work stuff. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, today we're going to cover these two knives and this. These two because they're going to be kind of similar in some weird ways. And also, I'm not going to spend super long on this one because, yeah. Anyway, first things first. I got this in the mail as well when uh, when I came back, and this is from Renegade Provisions Co., aka my friend Chris Rossiter. And I don't actually know what this is because I don't think I ordered anything from him. Uh, I did order another Hank when I got my God of Mischief pre-order, and that already came. And I do know that at some point I'm going to get to check out some smaller versions of the Gungnir that are coming out. And, uh, sorry, Gungnir, not the Gungnir. Sorry, Chris. And I don't think that could possibly be what's in here because this is just too light. This feels like one of the boxes he ships Hanks in, so I don't know what to expect. I wonder if I can just pull this open. Yeah. I love these bubble mailers he uses. They are like the single sturdiest bubble mailers I have ever seen. They're just so rigid. They're really cool. He ships these in these cool boxes. What is in here? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Cool. Oh, wow. Okay. So I guess this is just him being kind. So I am a member of a group chat that he is in called the Grog. And uh, this is one of the custom Grog Hanks that he had made. And he gave those to us for free. But check these out. I, I don't know if these are for a, a giveaway or if these are just for me as a kind gift. But um, yeah, OK, so he has these wool hanks these days. He's had some wool hanks in the past, I think, but he did a whole bunch this last winter and they are just stupendous. They are the best hanks on the market. And I've been using this one here at my desk for ages uh, now to wipe down blades before or during videos because it just works so well for that. The wool is really, really nice, high quality. Um, if, if you've seen any of my my like front facing talking head videos, you know I wear a lot of sweaters. I spent a lot of my life around wool, and this wool is very, very nice. But the cloth in the back of this is this microfiber cloth is just such a good microfiber. It's really thick. These are some of the thickest hanks you'll find, and it's just so plush. It works so well. It is optical grade cloth. I adore these ones that he's done. And these are some really vivid, awesome new colors. This is like a perfect Christmas Hank. Holy crap, look at that. And what do we have here? This is another kind of Christmassy Hank, but there's enough blue in this. This feels just kind of like a fun picnic blanket kind of thing. And then this one, ooh, look at the autumnal colors in that. Yeah, these are just so high quality. And look at the the fun contrast stitching he's doing. So like here he did a like a blending in stitching. This this kind of sinks into this gray and you barely even notice it. And on these, like yeah, that blends in there, but then look at that bright vivid contrast in the back. These are so cool. Um <laughs> Huge thank you to Chris for this awesome surprise. I will talk with him about what he intends for me to do with these. I do actually have a, a giveaway that I'm going to have to put together coming up soon because I am getting dangerously close to 2,000 uh, subscribers on, on YouTube, which just absolutely blows my mind. And I'm also getting really, really close to 1,000 folks on Instagram. Um, I don't really post to Instagram very much, so it really is weird to me that, that almost a thousand people follow me there. I guess they just follow me because I sometimes talk about YouTube stuff, but that's really cool. I don't know. Um, uh, I might do a giveaway for both of those, and I might include some of those in the giveaway. I'll talk to Chris about if he's okay with that. Um, they're amazing hanks. So I would love to get them in the hands of more people. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Right. Okay. So there was a big shipping label here. I, I took it off because it just came off pretty easily. That should give you an idea of what's in here. I mentioned earlier that I used, I opened up the TWO Price Dawn, and that is one of my absolute favorite knives that's come out in a really long time. So let's use that to open this up. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this knife because I already have a full, wow, that's slicey. I have a full small details review um, of the Brian Brown knives, 
Jaeger M already. Okay, that has my address on it. Hopefully I got that out in time. Um, that you can watch. Brian was super, super kind and and loaned me like his personal Jaeger, and it was one of the ones that was uh, customized by Fanatic Edge. And yes, yeah, so you can go check that out if you want to see a whole bunch of my deep, nerdy rambling on this. But this is mine that finally came in from the pre-order. This is a really cool, hollow-looking thing. That's just appears to be some cards. Maybe those are stickers. That's definitely a stickers. Let's get this open. This is the from the. What is it? The third version, the third run, uh, production run of these knives. The very first one was done by We Knives, and they came out really nice. Everyone really loves those. There's nothing wrong with those. But he switched to Riot because they gave him more flexibility uh, in like how many he needed in order to have different variations. We wanted him to do much larger batch sizes to have the kind of um, different customized scales. Now, in the second drop, like I said, came out through Wii, and I I really wish I could have gotten in on that drop because I just wish I had this knife for longer. But they did another version, and I'm so glad to finally have my own. I fell in love with that knife so quickly when he loaned it to me. And in this uh, this this release, they did exclusively fat carbon inlays except there was a version that was only available as part of like i think a lotto or something like that in the facebook group i really wish i got that one it was this like denim blue paper stone i would love to have that if i can find that anywhere i want that knife i want to find if i can find that on secondary if, if you have one of those uh facebook group exclusives and you are willing to let go of it i will buy it off you um there's also a version that's been milled by uh, Fanatic Edge again. I would really, really love it. It's got a kind of a golf putter-esque milling that they call a uh, double Doppler. Anyway, bottom line is, is I bought in this the plain tie one. I don't love the storm style of fat carbons that they were using in this drop, and so I went for plain tie. I'm a, I'm a very plain tie kind of guy to begin with. Uh, if you watched my State of the Collection video, you'll know that I have a lot of knives that kind of match that description. And I specifically went for, oh man, that's a cool looking knife. It's funny, because this knife, it's not that light, but for some reason, every time I pick it up, it just feels super light. Anyway, I went for the version that is non-flipper. Yeah, the version that he loaned me had the flipper, and I actually found that I loved the flipper, but oh, this flick is just so good that I don't need the flipper, and specifically, I wanted to be able to choke up like that. Yeah, oh, that's good. So on the flipper version, it sticks out right there. And so you kind of, you know, it's not that you're forced to be back here on the knife because you can kind of roll up around that flipper. It doesn't stick out so far that it you can't come up here. But this version where you can just roll all the way up and you can even lean up here onto the blades part, that is so good. And back here, that is so good. Oh. Oh my god, I love this knife. Okay, so this looks to me like it's almost ever so slightly recurving back. Is that happening? No, no, I don't think so. It's just an optical illusion. The one that he loaned me actually was recurving back just slightly. And what I don't know is if that was how it came, or it was his personal knife, so he might have just sharpened it in a way that uh, slightly recurved back. And so I think my expectation is just set. I know that it is possible, but that looks perfectly straight. God, that is just such a freaking gorgeous knife. Wow, 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 wow. Look at the belt satin hollow on that. It is so thin. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, this knife has one of the coolest blade profiles. Look at that. I love when a hollow ground knife has a swedge at the top because it gives you this just, yeah, this diamond shape that is just so cool. Look how thin that is for so long. Oh my god. So when I mentioned the God of Mischief uh, in earlier in this video from Renegade, and he went out of his way, like he intentionally didn't make the God of Mischief hologram because he didn't want this. This tip is so dainty that you can't do hard work with this. Now, if you're buying this type of knife, you aren't trying to do hard work with this. You want a super duper slicey tip. And so this is the kind of thing that's gonna just instantly melt through things. Like if you're trying to do what I was just opening, like a bubble wrap, I actually didn't cut that, but if you're trying to open something like that, this is the kind of tip that just 
melts through like butter. But he wanted the God of Mischief to have a more robust tip that you could actually put a good amount of force on and not worry about bending off to the side. Now, I don't typically do the kind of cutting where I'm not going to be like pushing on the side. You're never going to pry with this tip. So this type of blade actually works perfectly for me, but it's also really cool that the, uh, yeah, that's definitely kind of stiff. It's cool that the God of Mischief is going to add some variety in my, oh, I love the sounds this makes, because it adds some variety in my collection. This is just tight enough, and this is a, a Riot build, and they almost always come just a smidge tighter than I want. So I'm going to back this out just the tiniest bit, All right? Like, ooh, it's, ooh, it's, that is Loctited. Um, how does this feel? I freaking love the sounds. It has a very thick mechanical sound to it, like a thwack kind of noise. And the, the blade is so thin that there's also a high resonance tone part to it too. This one is not ringing the way that the other one did, but it's just so much tighter. Do I want to bother with this right now? Okay, let's get something with more traction. That's T10, I need a T8. I will be so, so sad if I somehow slide out of this and scratch this gorgeous knife my very first time having it. That's one thing I don't love about this finish. This is um, the kind of bead blast finish that Riot puts on a lot of their knives, but it shows scratches and snails really, really easily. So let me see. I think with this stubby, I should be able to be good. Okay, yeah, now we're getting somewhere. So I don't need to turn this a lot. I expect that that's gonna be sufficient. Um, I actually messed up centering. I think I turned it just a smidge too much. To me, this is feeling, yeah, our centering's back. To me, this is feeling um, like it's gonna need to be maybe a little bit worn in and a little bit uh, lubed up, but wow. This is so easy to flick. I love the noises. It closes so easily. Is that, is that? Yeah, that has a detent ball ramp. Uh, I don't, yeah, maybe that happened. I, I'll, I'll have to go back and watch my own small details review. Where is the detent ball ramp? Is it this? That's like the tiniest detent ball ramp ever, but you can definitely feel that. Like it's, it's not like the kind that you that you don't have to bump up onto, but like that is definitely a detent ball ramp. Yeah, it's that. It's that. You can see it right there. This is such an incredibly tiny detent ball ramp. That. Wow, that's all it takes to get that level of uh, added push-up easiness. Oof. Oof. I am so excited to have this. Okay. Like I said, don't need to spend any more time on this because I have a full hour long or something like that, 40 minute long, something, small details review. I'm so excited to have one of these in. Um, I'm, despite getting this in, I'm still gonna be hunting that Fanatic Edge double Doppler version and the Paperstone inlay version. If if anyone has one of those and they wanna, they wanna um, part ways with, let me know. I freaking adore this. Okay, so what we're gonna segue into is this. This is by C Knife Works, Christensen Knife Works. That's, that's Matthew Christensen's company. And um, yeah, this is another hollow ground uh, sheep's footy custom version, I mean, production version of a custom knife. So it seems only fitting to kind of keep these together. Yeah. Okay, let's get this open. This, this is one of those knives, so. <clears throat> Matthew Christensen is prim primarily a custom knife maker. Ooh, that's cool. That does have my address on it. Matthew Christensen is primarily a custom knife maker, and I don't really, um, I don't really pay, I don't pay that much attention to custom knives at this point. Like, I just don't know that space super well, and so I, I didn't even know who he was. And then I, I found out that who he existed because uh, at like um, Blade West, I think, there was a photo posted of a bunch of friends of mine, people from 
this grog chat all sitting at dinner with him. And I was like, who is this person in the video? I mean, in the photo. And I clicked on the tag and saw and immediately was like, oh my God, I love you knives you make. And one of the things I saw is that he had done and I had completely missed a pre-order on this knife before. I, uh, and so I like, I immediately went like, oh my God, how do I get one of these? How do I get one of these? How do I get one of these? And I had missed it by so much. That they're actually coming in right after that. So right after me learning that I'd missed the pre-order on it, he posted up for sale. Um, the extras that he ordered as part of it. And of course it means I paid more for it, but whatever. I missed out on the one I really, really wanted and I've, I'm still looking for it. So the same thing, like if you have the, the version of this that I missed out on that I would love, let me know. There is a full tie version of this with zirconium, not the zircotai, I don't want the zircotai one, the zirconium accents. I would love that. But this is the version in my Carta. I haven't opened it up yet, which I know people are annoyed by because I wanted to comment on this. Dragon cut designs, what? is this? This is such a freaking cool pouch. Made in the USA? That's awesome. That is awesome. I have opened a lot of knives and they tend to come in pouches like this. And this is itself a nicer than average pouch because it's got a logo on it. It's faux leather. It's just kind of cool and it's neater than just the average one you find. But this is some next level branding. Okay, let's get this open. Ooh. Ooh, that is a very nice terry cloth. Wow, that is cool. Okay, let's finally get the knife. Ah, ooh, it's kind of smaller than I was expecting. Yeah, look at that. This is the Maverick S. That's another commonality between these. This is the Jaeger M, uh, the production version of the Jaeger, and this is the Maverick S, the production version of the Maverick. Um, the the M here is for medium, I believe. I think that's I believe that that's true because he does make a small, a medium, and a large version of the Jaeger in his customs. And this, I think the S here is for small because um, he does make a small mini and other versions. And if you actually look at the like the website, the pre-order he had on this, the website URL was mini Maverick pre-order and he calls this the Maverick S. Anyway, let's open this up. Oh, I love this. Oh my God, I love the way this looks. <laughs> okay, okay. I think you can see some design similarity. Clearly, I have a type right now. Um, these are both flat or mostly flat edge knives with a deep, deep hollow grind. Both have the same kind of Riot belt satin on that hollow, and it's a it's a hollow that only Riot can do. It's so good. You can see on both of these that the grind angle is actually coming upward, and so the, this plane of this grind is, is coming up to the point where this is bigger up here than it is back there. It's the exact same thing here. You can see that this is going upward. And so it is a slightly taller grind up here than it is back there. He has this swedge along the top. Let's see, that is something that I'm not sure if I'm gonna like. I sometimes, like I just finished saying over here that I love when they put a swedge on a hog round knife because you get this cool diamond profile. And yeah, that looks amazing. The downside to this is that if you're holding it in a pinch grip, you're pushing on a smaller piece of material here. And so it's more comfortable to push on something thicker. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's definitely doing it. This is the kind of thing, I gave this feedback to Chris when I was talking about the uh, the God of Mischief, knife designers. If you want a cool swedge aesthetic up here, my encouragement to you is to make the angle of it less aggressive because what you'll get is from the side, the same appearance of a swedge, but it'll just be laid um, more shallow instead of as deep. And what you're gonna get at the top is a, a thicker piece here for you to rest your finger on. And it's just it's just more comfortable, especially in a knife like this that's, that has a low down tip that you're gonna be using utility cuts. It's just more comfortable. Um, that said, this doesn't feel bad. It's thin enough that I notice it and I think it would be better if it was wider, but this still feels so good in my hand like this. This has just a little bit of curve downward. This handle actually reminds me of something else. Let me grab it. Okay, so this is my BMKT field spec. This is the um, EDC1 field spec. And it's not that these handles are um, meaningfully similar. It's just that I, this is the, the only other knife I have this in like this, like uh, natural micarta. And so I'm kind of on a natural micarta kick right now. I, I, I enjoy it a lot. And you can see that the color difference here is interesting. I, I think these are both like OG real micarta brand by Ultrax. I think that's what this is. I know that's what Rios using. I think that's what he said he's using here too. I'm not sure, but you can see that the color difference is from, if this is the same, then it's a batch to batch color difference. 
um, but this one is a little bit more tan brown. This one's a little bit more like red brown. Oh, I I absolutely love the way this feels in my hand. So I said that there is a version. Whew, wait a minute, that felt really good. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah. Oh, I've been waiting for this knife. Uh, not as long as some people, because like I said, I didn't even know this existed until after the pre-order was shipping in. But I, I've been so excited to get this knife since it, since I, the moment I learned about it. This is such a me knife. Um, and like I said, the I got the version that's in my carter, and there's a version that's in full tie. The full tie version is a frame lock. This version is a liner lock, and it is a inset liner specifically. So an inset liner, what that means, is that only the uh, the portion that you would push on up here is exposed, and the rest of the liner lock bar sits recessed underneath the scale. The entire scale itself, there is a full scale in there. Um, the entire scale itself is nested inside of the, sorry, the liner itself is nested inside of the scale. What's kind of bonkers to me, if you look in here, this is uh, a full titanium scale on both sides, and it is not milled out at all, but this feels crazy light. Very, very light. Where is the balance point on this? It's light enough that I, yeah, look at that. The balance point is perfect. It's exactly where you'd want it to be. It's right where your finger is, right there. God, that's amazing. I do suspect, though, that that means that the the um, titanium version is going to weigh enough more back here that the balance point will be further back. But this version feels super light and is insanely well balanced. Oh my god, I'm in love with this. How thin does this come? That, where do we, can I get that to focus? Focus. Uh, that is quite thin, but not crazy thin. I'm actually kind of surprised that it's not thinner behind the edge, given that it is a nice deep hollow and that this isn't crazy thick blade stock. I think this is 0 0.13, he said, but it feels good and thin. Actually, that's at the tip, that's pretty darn thin behind the edge. That looks to me like maybe like 17 or 18 thousandths behind the edge. Back here, it was looking more like uh, 18 to 20 thousandths. I'll have to measure these things. But what that might be is just the plunge grind, because this is one of the few things that I, I think could be better on this knife. But the reality is, it's, it's a, a Riot thing. I've been told by a couple different makers, not makers, designers right now, that Riot just says they can't do a more aggressive grind like this if they're doing um, on, 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 on their grinds. They, they, even when they're not just doing a hollow grind, they, for whatever reason, say that they can't, something about the machinery they use to do their grinds doesn't allow them to do a more, I don't, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. But what you'll find is like here, the edge termination on this isn't great. You see how the, the, uh, the plunge grind, the thing that takes them from the full thickness down to the thinnest behind the edge, I was having a hard time focusing on that, it's kind of um, swooping down and actually comes right up to the tip. You can see it's actually got a tiny bit of, it's it's either you'd call it a smile or a recurve right at the end, uh, already coming from the factory. And this one doesn't have a recurve. It does have the tiniest bit of smile already, just the ever so slightest bit. But what you're seeing is that, the yeah, so that's what's going on. This is actually probably very thin behind the edge. Um, and it's just that this plunge grind right here ends right at the end. So you do have this distance to sharpen, but you're going to get a smile the entire way you go up. Um, the action on that is delightful. Like I said before, Riot knives tend to come a little bit tight, and this is already very, very, very little effort to close. Reverse flicking, um, this is, you know, I'm pushing down from below. It's kind of tight in against the handle, but even with, if you're the kind of person that's used to pushing this direction, yeah, and actually that works just great. I tend to, on knives like this, especially when they're smaller, I tend to cant the entire knife forward in my hand and push up, and that works really, really well too. Uh, the thumb flick is money. That is fantastic. I love these clips and these these uh, thumb studs. And these are zirconium. So on all of the versions, there there was zirc in the stuff. So like the thumb studs, the pivot collar, and the pocket clip 
and the backspacer are all supposedly zirconium. And on the one version, he did zirku tie in all these. And it's amazing. The version, especially that version, the version that was like full tie with zirku tie, looks so much like his customs. It looks so so much like his customs that it's just crazy to me that people were able to get in on on a knife like that at such a, a, a discount, if you will, compared to if you were to actually get one of his real customs. Um, it's it's almost it's almost surprising to me when people when custom makers do stuff like that because there's a huge price difference. These are not cheap knives. This was I think 380 bucks, and the full Zerkutai version and was something like you know, 480 or something like that. And so these are very expensive knives by production knife standards, but his customs, I assume, I actually don't know how much they go for, but I assume they're three times that price, if not more. And so it's always a little bit surprising to me when a knife maker um, creates something that is so similar to what they charge so much more for. But I've never had handled one of his customs, and there's always a tremendous difference between something that is truly handmade and something that is mass produced. Even though Riot reaches this kind of near perfection, it's actually probably the kind of thing where the near perfection is is like it's this is probably more perfect than his customs. That that's a that's a kind of a common thing where like Riot makes things that are dialed in to the point where they are so precise that you that there's like perfect symmetry everywhere and on on handmade customs there's often just a little bit that is asymmetric or a little bit that is slightly warbly in the slightest bit that people consider like the mark of the maker and so some people really like that and this is weird uh truism where the the more you spend on 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 a knife there's a tipping point where at some point the quote unquote quality actually starts to kind of go down instead of going up consistently just because of the fact that it is finally being handmade um actually you know i believe so there's a knife show coming up in portland in a little bit i am i live in portland if you didn't already know that i've mentioned it a lot of times in videos um there's a knife show coming up in portland pretty soon it's a custom knife show and i think he's coming there I am planning on going to that, so I would love to check out his customs there. I don't know if he's bringing any Mavericks. Uh, I love this. This is something that I is right, right up my alley, which means that I would actually be in the market for one of his customs. Um, this is doing a thing that I don't super love. You can see that the way that the the uh, blade is hitting the stop pin in the closed position, there's this tiny little lip. Now that's a good thing on the one hand because it means that it's hitting a, a, a space that's spread out. It's not just a single contact point, it's hitting on a curved surface and that spreads out that impact force across that large thing. It's good for the longevity of the knife. But what it means is that there's this little hook right here that's just like a little jabby. And you can see, yeah, there it is. So it's, it's just a tiny little hook right there. And so on knives that if you want to get them to fall to your nail, if you have your thumb up here where this uh, is, this is going to come down and that's going to land right there. And I don't know if it's going to be immediately obvious to you what's going on here, but this is a pinchy knife. Like the F5.5 does the same thing. It falls and it just catches your finger there. So I wonder how far I need to be down to miss that entirely. Down there. And then what happens? Oh, okay. So that's a possibility. I could do... That's not super, no, yeah. It's possible, I think, to hold this far enough down that that misses my thumb and this lands right in that spot right there. But realistically, then I'm, I'm now pushing all the way at the back end of this. And so if I'm pushing anywhere near where this scallop is, that little jabby thing is gonna fall on me. But this isn't a very heavy blade at all with how, how hollow ground that is. So uh, yeah, it's not actually, it doesn't hurt when it does it. It's just a little bit of a pinch. Uh, speaking of which, there is a scallop on the other side. That is really, really nice access there. Super easy to unlock. Let's look at this clip a little bit more. Like I said, this is zirconium. I don't think, I don't think I have any zirconium in my collection until this. I think this is my first zirconium. It's not the first time I've experienced zirconium, but I think it's the first in my collection. Uh, zirconium is a pretty heavy metal. Um, it's markedly heavier than titanium. And so it's also just cool to see that this balance point and everything is so perfect, um, given that they have a heavier metal and this full tall backspacer. I bet you if this was titanium everywhere, that the balance wouldn't be quite as perfect. 
Wow. Yeah. So this clip is really pretty nice. It's, it's um, angled slightly. And so this is about how deep it's going to be, but I think it's going to sit in your pocket more like that. And so it's not the deepest carry. And I think they could probably make it even deeper by just pulling this up and pulling it back into this back corner. I'd probably like to see that, but I really like the way it looks on here. And then in this dimension, you got really nice ramp in both ways. Yeah, that is delightful. How's that feel in hand? I said it earlier that this felt great in my hands. So I must not be feeling this. It's a little bit longer clip than I normally go for. And so it's interesting. I actually was expecting this to... Yeah, okay. So what I often find is that you feel clips if they land past this line in your hand. Because this part of your hand right here stays pretty flat. And then this curve, this fold in your hand is because your hand kind of curves in naturally this way. And this part right here has more meat behind it. Like I'm basically all hands. This part's relatively flat and this part bells up. And so what I find is that clips tend to feel good and that you just don't feel them if they land here behind this curve. And they tend to feel bad if they land past that curve, because then it feels like it's poking into you. And so like if I hold this in the in this spot right here, or choked up, this clip is landing behind that, and I just, I genuinely just don't feel it. But if it were, if I hold it scooted back, and now it's pushing in there, now I feel it and it feels terrible. So this clip you're seeing actually falls in front of that curve, and so I would expect it to not feel good. But something about the way that this curve is right here, and the angle of this compared to the overall knife and the placement, means that it's not hitting up here, it's hitting like down here, like back here. And as a result, yeah, I don't feel that. That's amazing to me. It's very uncommon for a knife to uh, clip to land there in my hand and me not feel it, but this feels fantastic. Wow. Spring tension seemed good. Yeah, that's gonna be a good clip. I'm very pleased with that. It has this kind of geared backspacer, which, um, you know, it doesn't match really anything else in the knife. Nothing else has a geared pattern to it, but I, I, so it's not like it's an aesthetic tie-in to anywhere else, but I always really like that. I think it's a really cool looking thing because I, I tend to really like mechanical gadget stuff that has kind of gears that move in it. Sometimes that can lean a little steampunky and that's not really my aesthetic, but this, just this, this amount of a kind of a gear pattern on the back is just right up my alley. I really, really like it. I think that's going to be really cool. Um, what else would I want to say about this? It has very pronounced large uh, pivot collars. Like this has a pivot collar, but the entire pivot collar is about the size of some pivots. Um, this is much, much bigger and gives you almost this eyeball look. I think that's fun. And I think that the fact that they made these zirconium too just has like a really nice kind of continuous pops of colors. Some people don't like black on brown. And I think it works in this case because it is just small accents and also because this is a kind of a reddish brown. I don't know how well that's going to capture on my, on my video, but it is just in leaning that redder direction. And I think black actually pairs really, really nicely with that. My, my biggest complaint with this knife so far, actually my only complaint with this knife so far, I guess would be, well, this, I wish that was a uh, steeper grind, but it's that. I like his logo. I think it's kind of cool looking, but it's not like my favorite logo in the world and it's right there on the grind. And I personally really don't like when logos are on the grind. So what I would rather he have done is you see how this is dual keyed. I would much rather this have been a captive pivot and that this pivot had been flush and that if it had been a flush rather than down pivot, he could have put the logo right there. And since it'd be captive, it wouldn't have the screw hole on it. And I just personally think that would look a lot better. But one of the interesting things about this being domed is that it feels neat in your hand. And so you can kind of feel it texturally. And especially if you're holding it in a pinch grip like this, I love when you can feel a pivot as an anchoring point where it's not something that hurts press against, but it, it tells you where your fingers are. So it's like an indexing point. And it also gives you something to push against. So this is... Um, reasonably polished micarta and so but it does still have a decent grip to it but having just this little bit of ridge right here that you can get that does is enough that like kind of locks your finger in if you choke up put your fingers on the blade ooh yeah that still feels really really nice i will say um i think the placement of the thumb stud could be better 
um, if you look, it's pretty far out here in the path of the cutting path. And so you can see that it could fall further back and be back here where you're not cutting. If they were to move it back, that would mean it would move up. And I think that would work fine too. Like if you look at where this is, I think they could have moved this up to right about there. And I think it would still work really, really well and um, just solve that other problem. But as is, I don't feel like this is like in an awkward position. I think if it was right here, it'd work just fine. Partly because of just how small this knife is, it's easy to tuck it up in your hand and get it still a lot of leverage. But this does work really, really well. Okay, I adore this and I also adore this. And what that means is even though I really, really love these knives that I got, it means I'm still gonna be hunting for other versions of these because I like these so much that it's worth that hunt to me. On this, I'm going to be hunting that Golf Pottery Double Doppler and the Paper Stone. And on this, I'm going to forever hunt that tie, uh, full tie with the Zerk accents um, until I finally get one. And because, like, if I get the Golf Pottery one of this, I'm probably going to sell this. I don't think I love a plain Jane version of this enough to justify having it and the golf pottery, because the golf pottery is just so me. But this, because it's a liner lock and the full tie version that I'd be hunting is a frame lock, that's actually a pretty meaningful difference. They're gonna behave differently and they're gonna feel differently. The weighting is gonna be very different. I think I'm gonna keep both. I, it's rare for me to own doubles of knives, but this is a knife that I actually am immediately loving so much that I would be willing to have two of these for sure. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention, I should have mentioned this earlier, um, as far as this is a small enough knife that you can actually curl your hand up past this thinner spot, put your thumb up on the blade and curl your finger down over that and like that. This is going to be true, a lot truer if you have bigger hands than me, because I have medium glove size hands, which means the length of my fingers is not tremendously long. Um, and so if you have large size gloves or even larger, you might think that this knife wouldn't fit you and it might not. You might be the kind of thing where you're curling off and you'd be like, maybe you'd be like that. But I think that you probably would have room, but it would also be easier if you do this thing where you put your thumb up on the blade right there and curl your finger over the edge to do tip, uh, I don't know, utility cuts with the tip. Uh, for me, this is just the right size to do that. Like I can hold this and it feels really, really nice. And when I am doing detailed precision work, it's actually very common for me to come up here on the blade in part because I spend a lot of time in the kitchen and I'm very used to holding knives in this kind of grip where you're gripping on the blade because that's what you use to do like cutting um, of vegetables and stuff like that. And this feels so nice. Yeah, this does feel very thin. Oof, I love it, 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 I love it. I am so excited about these. And before I end, once again, Chris, huge, huge thanks for sending me these. That's just so freaking cool. So it's time to fill an update because I managed to get one of these. Huge thank you to my friend Noah. He had one of these. He was thinking of potentially letting it go. He knew I really wanted it, so he sold it to me. And he even sold it to me at the original um, like pre-order price, which is oh, just super appreciated. This thing is incredible. I absolutely love the way this looks. The black zerk on the silver titanium is such a cool aesthetic. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, there are some interesting differences between these two. Um, the big thing is the action. Man, they behave so differently. The I, I knew that the liner lock would behave differently in a frame lock, but normally I expect the liner lock to have a lighter detent than the frame lock because typically liner locks have lighter lock bar pressure. But this is actually reasonably firm and the, the engagement here is just quite deep. And so the result is that this is, ooh, this is like rocket out. By the way, you hear that lock stick every single time. Ooh, man, it is so freaking snappy. Just bonkers. That lock stick is because this is a titanium lock bar and it's not thick enough to have an insert. And so you just get a little bit of stick. It will go away. That's typically how this works, but ooh, it is so freaking snappy. This by contrast has, I expected this to be firmer, but this is actually a pretty I don't know, medium, I'd say, amount of pressure that goes over. And there is a steel lock bar insert on this version, of course. And so the result, I guess if you combine it with the fact that this just doesn't have quite as deep of engagement, uh, it's pretty darn deep, but there's a very tiny gap there, whereas that one's fully all the way in. This 
has more like middle ground action. It's good, like it's very good. It's very easy to open. It feels very satisfying when it pops open, but it just doesn't have the exact same kind of snap the same way. This thing over here pops with such wild authority. Now, you were probably hearing this whole time. Man, you hear that ring? So what's going on here is that this has a tappy clip. It is sticking off of the frame just ever so slightly, like, you know, a very small fraction of a millimeter. And that typically drives me insane on eyes. And I might, it might drive me insane on this one. I might end up taking this off and ever so slightly bending this down. But the reality is, is that I kind of love that ring that it does. Like if, I, if I'm uh, thumb flicking this and, I'm, and let's say I put pressure on this to hold it down, no ring. But if I middle finger flick this, reverse flick this, you can see how my hand is not touching this at all. And so it's left to act as a tuning fork. Ooh, it's just so fun. I love that. Ooh, that is cool. So I might actually leave it just because I like that so much about it. The other thing that I think um, is really worth pointing out that I was actually surprised to find, um, I didn't really, I didn't think about this in the unboxing video, but the more I felt this, the more I realized that these edges are crisp in a way that I was surprised to find. Normally you'll find a very slight chamfer on the edges of um, Riot's uh, micarta handles because it just it's a it's a pretty hard material and so if you leave it as a rough edge I mean not rough but like a crisp edge that's the other thing um, a lot of makers just don't have the kind of precise cutting that Riot does and so they just intrinsically get a less crisp edge and that's in this particular case potentially a good thing but here these edges are just kind of sharp and I was wondering, I was really curious when I started noticing this, that um, I was wondering what it was going to be like over here. And what, what they've done over here is exactly what I think they should have done over here. You can see there is this chamfer that runs the entire way. And so honestly, I think they should have done that here. They, I feel like they kind of skipped it. This will, with time, wear down to the point where it's not like rough, but it's not, I don't know, it's not, it's not like a the bad thing per se. It's just, it's crisper and I don't, I don't, I don't like it. And this, by contrast, Oh my God, this thing melts into my hand. This is so exceptionally smooth and beautiful. And I think this is exactly the kind of work that Riot has gotten known for, especially for things like, let me pull one out. So this is the Mini Tempest by Sharp Eye Designs. And one of the things that people have commented about in almost all of the videos I've seen of this is just how exceptionally smooth this finishing is. This thing is so well-rounded everywhere that it just feels melted in this really hard to do way. It's hard to make things feel melted in a way that's also crisp and precise because a lot of times if you do a melting thing, it, it just means that you're, you're tumbling it to such strong a degree or that you're, you're going over this with whatever you're using to, to finish this in a way that's, yeah, it just kind of takes away the accuracy of everything. But Riot is able to make these so smooth and wonderful transitions while still giving you exactly the corners where you belong, where you expect to have them. And they've done that such, such a good job here. There's little tiny chamfers everywhere and every single spot is just beautifully rounded off. I, I am blown away by how good this feels in my hand. I really, really, really love that. Um, I said in my video for this that I expected that the titanium version would be heavy enough in the handle that it would ruin this perfect balance position. And I was wrong. This has nearly identical perfect balance position. And the reason is because look at this pocketing. This is absolutely fully skeletonized. It's not as skeletonized over on this side um, because of the lock bar, but it's almost the same. Let's see if I can bounce some light up. Yeah, you can see it's all the way. This entire bar is completely hollowed out. And this entire bar is completely hollowed out. And the end result is that this is not heavy. It is heavier, but like barely. It's, it's a little bit heavier. And the balance point, like I said, is exactly where you want it to be again. It's right up where your front finger sits. And it just, I'm really impressed with how well Riyadh pulled this off. I I absolutely adore what's going on here. Man, that's fun.
I, yeah. So, at the end of the day, I have both now. Um, I said I thought I would keep both. I still have both. Um, I probably will keep both. They feel different enough, especially because this one uh, has just such an absurdly snappy action. They feel different enough, and they look different enough, that since this is such a mean knife, yeah, I think I think they're just both going to be keepers for me. I absolutely love these. Um, oh, and follow up. I did get to go meet Matthew Christensen. He was such an incredibly nice guy. He came to the knife show in Portland and, you know, he and I hadn't talked much on Instagram. I left maybe a couple comments once or twice and he was always polite and everything like that, but he didn't have any like rapport with me or anything. And so it was really cool to see that in person he was an incredibly friendly person. He was really easy to talk to, really nice, and answered all my questions about this stuff. And I did get to check out a Maverick. Um, the one he had there was a newer version that he was doing with flat slab scales. Um, I, I, I forget, he, he told me about the backstory of trying that out. I think he was saying it was an attempt to um, be able to do them a little bit faster, uh, and but in a way that people, cause some people were requesting flat slab scales, and he thought that if he did them that way, he might be able to get them out a little bit faster and be able to give them more, a few more knives to people. I, don't, I think that was his explanation. I might be getting that wrong. Um, but what I will say is, man, I, I loved the way the, the custom felt in my hand. And this, um, this Maverick S is the small version. He doesn't do the small in a custom, I learned. Um, and I was worried that the full size version would just be too big for me, but I held, held it in my hand. And as much as I love this, that one felt great in my hand too. Now I did not get to pick up the one that he had there at the show. It wasn't exactly the most me build. It had um, some of the, the speed holes in the handle, but it was gorgeous. And I will definitely be on the lookout for one of his customs in the full size because I now know having held it in hand that it was um, a very, very mean knife too. I, I, I was very, very impressed with it. Okay, so thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.